Hey bakers and welcome back to the Baking Buddy Kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to temper chocolate. Now it's a big word but don't be scared. Tempering cho- oven just went off. Tempering chocolate is just the method of properly melting your chocolate so that it can reach the right consistency and the right texture for anything that you're using melted chocolate for. If you just pop your chocolate in the microwave or you try to do it in a hot pot, I mean, your, your chocolate's gonna melt, but it's not gonna reach the right consistency. It's not gonna get that beautiful, glossy feel. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. It's actually a really simple, easy process. All you're gonna have to do is set up a double boiler and as intimidating or fancy as that may sound, it's really just a pot of boiling water with a glass bowl on top. You want to use a glass bowl to melt your chocolate in. A metal bowl is going to get too hot and you're going to burn the chocolate that touches the metal. You can use a plastic bowl but really glass is your absolute best option. Now in my experience with melting chocolate, the 76% cocoa ratio is your absolute best bet. That's going to give you the smoothest, glossiest chocolate, but really any kind of chocolate will do. Just make sure you take the time to melt the chocolate the right way. Now right before we head over to our double boiler, make sure that the bowl you're using does not have any water on it. If there's so much as a drop of water on your bowl or even a little bit of condensation, your chocolate is going to curdle up and turn into the equivalent of cottage cheese. And even though chocolate cottage cheese sounds pretty amazing. Wow, that really does sound amazing. It's not what you want. You completely dry every single nook and cranny of your bowl. Alright, let's get over to the stove. Okay, so I brought a pot of water to a boil and I'm going to take it off the heat to begin the long, complicated technique of setting up a double boiler. Are you ready? This is going to be really tricky, okay? So you're going to take a dry glass bowl and place it on your pot. There you go, double boiler, that's it. I know it's really hard, but you can do it. I believe in you. Now, why didn't we just put the bowl on while the pot was over the flame? Well, if we do that, the glass would have gotten too hot, too fast, and shattered. Then you have to go out and spend like $30 on another bowl, or however much they cost. I don't know, I, I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. I'm the talent. Anyways, now the glass is gradually heated to the temperature we want it to, so we're going to move the boiler back to the heat, and that's a low heat. We want a very low temperature so our chocolate will melt slowly. Don't rush, it's not jury duty. The slower it melts, the smoother, glossier, velvety consistency you're going to get. Let's pour in our chocolate. Now there's two methods of tempering chocolate. They're both just as easy, and to be perfectly honest, they'll both give you the same exact results. I've done it each way countless times and I can't tell the difference. Method 1. We melt all the chocolate about two thirds of the way. Take it off the stove and let the heat from the melted chocolate melt the unmelted chocolate. Method 2. You melt two thirds of the chocolate all the way, take it off the stove, pour in the remaining one third and let the melted chocolate melt the unmelted chocolate. That's all the tempering process really is. Melted chocolate melting unmelted chocolate. See? Not so scary. 19 missed calls from your mother, that's scary. I'm gonna pour in two thirds of the chocolate, make sure the heat is on low, and then I'm just gonna leave it alone. Don't touch it, don't mess with it, don't even look at it for too long because you will be tempted to crank up that heat. It's not a race, so take your time. This is where patience comes in. Now if you're doing this the right way, it's gonna take a long time, so find a way to pass the time while the chocolate does its thing. Return your mother's missed phone calls, go for a walk, destroy that cheesecake that's been teasing you in the fridge. Who cares? I'm not judging you. That's what Santa's for. You will want to stir the chocolate, but do it as seldomly as possible. One to three times at most, depending on how much chocolate you have. When you're ready to stir, take the boiler off the heat so you're not trying to mix over direct heat. And also make sure you use something to protect your fingers with, because that glass is going to be hotter than yours truly. Okay, so if I was going with method one, what I would do now is take my boiler off the heat and fold the mixture until the melted chocolate melted the unmelted chocolate. But I'm going with method two, so I'm going to let this melt all the way. And now the chocolate is completely melted, but keep in mind that I sped up the footage so it will take a while to get to this point. I'm going to take my glass off the heat and pour in my remaining chocolate. Now we're just going to mix this off the heat until all the chocolate gradually melts. And there you have it. Now you have smooth, glossy, tempered chocolate that's reached the perfect consistency to coat, candy bars, strawberries, chocolate decorations, or really you could just eat this by the spoon. Who needs love when you can have chocolate? We're going to turn this into some amazing chocolate bark and chocolate decorations, and you can click right here to see those videos. 
Thank you again so much for joining me in the kitchen today. And remember, every time you share this video, a baby dolphin gets its wings. Now this right here is the ultimate baking hack. Your baking buddy is going to completely revolutionize the way you bake. It's a non-stick silicone surface for your baking pans that provides you the perfect medium to bake on. It also has everything a baker needs like measurements, metric conversions, and a standard cookie recipe printed right on the surface. The silicone evenly distributes heat so that you get the same quality of baking that you could only get with an expensive industrial oven. In fact, you can click right over here and watch a quick video that shows you all of the other amazing things your baking buddy can do. Thanks again for joining me in the kitchen today. If you had as much fun as I did, make sure you hit that subscribe button so I can see you next week. Also, leave me a comment letting us know what we should bake. If we use your suggestion, we'll make sure to give you a shout out. But why stop there? Let's keep this party going. You can click on either side of me for more video recipes, or if you want to learn a little more about our baking buddy, you can click right below me to see a quick video that shows you how it all works. And if you like this video, let us know. Leave us a comment or hit like. You would not believe how much one little click helps all of us out here. Also, you can join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest where you'll find more recipes, more tips, and pictures of the amazing creations that you've sent us. Remember, our community is not complete without you. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week.